the uh, Metamora, Indiana at the Canal Day celebration. And this train just brought a load of people from probably Cincinnati. They're just leaving now. This is the uh, Canal Days, Metamora, Indiana. Where that train is running is right beside the canal. I'll get a pictures of the canal in a little bit later. I'm standing in the doorway of a grist mill, but they're not running it because there's not enough people to show. So I'm just going to take pictures of the grist mill with it not running. All right, there's the caboose. I guess we'll go inside and look at the grist mill. On a regular basis, uh, everything is ground between two stones like those okay. two on the front wall. They are French burr stones. That's spelled B-U-H-R. And um, they are quarried in France uh, cut into sections to start, then they're grilled and banded together as you can see there, mm -hmm. and they're kind of the standard in the milling trade. The, uh, the larger stone on the left weighs about 1,500 pounds. 1,500. The smaller stone on the right weighs about half that, about 750. 750. And they are considered to be the standard in the milling trade. Years ago, uh, they would uh, be quarried and then a lot of them found their way onto ships. Coming across the ocean, um, they uh, would provide ballast for the ship. And as it turns out, a lot of them found their way into old mills like this one. Would they use that at Spring Mill too? Um, yeah, you know, probably, I'm guessing, a similar type similar. of stone, certainly. <clears throat> but um, the, uh, um, these French fur stones, as I say, are considered to be the standard of the milling trade. Those two are simply examples of the stones inside the mill here, or inside this wooden housing. <clears throat> The, uh, let me say this, most two stones on the front wall came to us from a farm field in Shelby County, farm not field. too far from us, uh, a few years back. How they ever got them in here? I don't know. 1500. Now, now you're saying what's in here is the exact same thing? What's inside Basically, the wood? Yes. Okay. Yeah. The big one and the small one. The big one did, did most of the work against the smaller one, right? So that would sit on top of that one. Right. Yeah. When, when it's operating, between. let me say this. I mentioned Shelby <laughs> County. Our corn comes to us from Fisher's Food Grade Products located in Shelbyville. Mm -hmm. But uh, again, we have both white and yellow corn that are ground. The corn initially is thrown into the hopper here. When it's operating, this piece here, known as the damsel, vibrates back and forth. The corn drops down through that shaft area through what's called the eye of the stone, the opening in the top stone. And then it drops down in between the two stones. When everything is wor working, top stone, which is known as the runner, rotates clockwise. Mm. Bottom stone is stationary throughout the process, does not move. There's a little space between the stones that's regulated by this wheel here, okay. which can be turned to raise or lower the amount of space in between. You don't want the stones rubbing together for risk of a fire, of course. Mm. So how much, how much space was between it? Like half oh, an inch, about an inch? About, about like half. About an inch, half. and then the, the, the operator 
adjust it according right, to what he it thinks. Can be adjusted. Okay. Yeah. Now the corn initially is cracked. The cracked corn drops through this chute here on the side into this holding tank, which then it then collects the cracked corn collects on these plates on this conveyor belt, which runs on up when it's in going, it runs on up, and everything is deposited in that metal shaft, which drops down into the flower dresser. The flower dresser serves as a sifter. Now, where's the flower dresser? Where's the flower dresser? This thing. Oh, you? Yeah, right, right on the side there. It's okay. got a name on it right there. So right in here, this shifts, sifts it or? Yeah. Oh, I see. It tries to get that name on there. Yeah. Where fires come yeah. Okay. Yeah. In fact, this building, you know, well, there was originally a mill here in 1845. However, had a fire in, in 1899, was rebuilt the next year. So this particular mill dates to 1900. So this is a new building. <laughs> so this is a, like a newer building. Yeah. Right. And right. it's lasted since so 1900. Speaking. Yeah. Now, wow. the, um, uh, notice the buckets, the metal buckets around the corner there. When everything is in operation, three of the metal buckets are placed beneath the flower dresser to collect the finished product. And uh, when they get a pretty good bucket load, uh, the fellows on our crew will take one bucket out, bring it over to the table here, scoop everything out, into bags like this, carefully weigh it on the scale, uh, two pounds, and then take it over to the shelf and make it available for sale. Mm -hmm. hmm. Now, I, I would have thought they'd have had bigger sacks uh, of finished product. At one time we did. We had five pound sacks. Five, just five? Okay. Uh, uh, as well as the two pounds. Mm -hmm. Nothing bigger? No. Okay. Now, around the corner, I can show you a little tubular sifter. When everything's in motion, it revolves around and around. And uh, look at the fine screen here, the fine wire mesh screen. That is what provides us with the cornmeal. We have two other sections of screen. have a metal section of screen which provides us with the corn grits. And the grits are simply a coarser grind of the same corn that provides us with the cornmeal. Yeah, notice the holes are larger as you go that direction. Right. This is not, this is even coarser, coarser this last coarser. section. Mm. It's basically what we bag up and make available as duck food. However, let me say this, can be used for human consumption if somebody desires a coarser texture. Insofar as it goes, we've had requests from people requesting just the unsifted or the cracked corn coming out of the mill, which would provide an even coarser texture. Now I wanted to cite a couple other things regarding this flower dresser. It still has the year it was made on the front. To be exact, it's been with us, not here, all that time, but it's been present, it's been, dates back to 1889. Wow. Been around for 130 years. Wow. To still be operating and still be functional, I think is testimonial to the workmanship that went into the manufacture of these flower dressers. No kidding. Let me say this. Still bears the manufacturer's label. It was made by a firm out of Indianapolis, Nordyke and Marmon. Nordyke, as we understand it, came to this country from Holland, where he had been engaged as a miller. 
He continued doing so after he got to this country and eventually teamed up with this other fellow, Marmon, to manufacture these flower dresses. Now, Marmon is a name that would later be associated with the very first winner of the Indianapolis 500 mile race. So apparently at some point, he pulled out of the firm that made these flower dresses. However, let me say this. According to people who were in the mill recently, there was a gentleman who talked about working in downtown Indianapolis. He said there's still a sign that bears the logo of this Nordyke and Marmot. He didn't know if they were in operation yet, mm. but he saw it about every day on his way to work. Mm. So, so I thought that was kind of... In the basement, this is the gear room. Now these would be attached to the, the water wheel outside. I'll get outside and show you the water wheel. But this is all the gears that turn all the mechanisms upstairs. If you remember him saying this burned down in 1899, so it was built back up. So 1900 till now is uh, how long this building has lasted. They said with the, uh, with the corn flour, the fires were, were easy, were common, so you had to be careful because of the fires. All right, I'm going to go outside and look at the water wheel. This is what would uh, power the machine inside the building, this water wheel. Right now they're lacking some parts to make it run, so they're raising money for that purpose. This is the canal. I'm going to conclude this video just with this. The canal only ran a couple of years, but I'll be doing another video just on the uh, canal, but I wanted to get that grist mill in here because the man was willing to uh, tell us a lot about it. Thanks for watching, guys.